Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes' Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion. With over 40 years of experience, in addition to our pro brand of high-quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as... Cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800 345 Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. If you are into development today, then I think this conversation is going to be for you. Welcome to the platform, John. Talk to me, my friend. How are you? Hey, Kevin. Thanks for for having me. Not a problem. So as we were briefly uh, uh, preparing, we said we're just going to keep it organic. So we're just we're going to we're going to just jump right into it. (laughs) <laughs> what what made you want to become a developer, John? And what is a developer? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. So I'm an architect. Architect. Okay. And originally, yes. I mean, still, I mean, that's what it, what I ended up going to school for, to graduate school for. Yes. And the reason why I got into that, I think, is the same reason why I ended up getting into development. Yes. And it's really redevelopment in Trenton. Okay. That, that's what I what I do, and if you, this is going to be slightly a long story. But when I was a kid, I lived in New York City. Yes, and I remember um, I remember vividly going to different neighborhoods. I I'm, was born and raised in Brooklyn. Yes, but going to different neighborhoods in the city and like coming out of a subway station and looking around me and seeing like blocks and blocks demolished for yes. urban renewal, and I just remember. At some point, it was clicking like how much I love my neighborhood, and then seeing these demolished neighborhoods was just like completely shocking. And so, partly why I went into architecture was just, you know, I love cities and I love buildings and neighborhoods and kind of the, the whole civic life. And um, you know, so that's how I got into architecture and then urban design and historic preservation, and then living here in Trenton. Um, you know, my my spouse, my husband and I, we were we live in Mill Hill in a historic neighborhood. Yes. And we were just noticing that mm-hmm. it had just kind of um you know it was great but it kinda of hit a plateau and everybody was sort of like, When will somebody come in and finish <laughs> the neighborhood? When's somebody gonna save the neighborhood? Yes. And at so, you know, we were talking with friends of ours and we we're like, Well, what are we waiting for? Why don't we do it? Yes. And so um, you know, so the four of us started a little company and that's what we started doing. There were vacant houses and uh, we, we bought a few ultimately from the city. They'd been vacant a long time. They were in terrible shape, but we fixed them up. Yes. And um, we did a lot of, um, you know, our own labor to begin with and sold them and it kind of went on from there. So. Wow. I want to stop you before we get into it. When you said that they were looking for who was going to save the neighborhood. You and two of your three of your other friends got together and said, we should save the neighborhood, right? It was kind of like that. It's, it, I don't know if we really thought we were saving the neighborhood, but okay. it was more like, like, um, like, you know, nobody else is going to come in. Why don't you know, like, what are we waiting for? Yes. Like some, somebody to drop in and um, to, to do all this. And it was more like, well, we could do this. So, so anyway, so that, that was kind of the thinking. I'm thinking, could we replicate that again? Like, for example, could you 
and your spouse team up with, say, mm-hmm. a, a minority developer contractor. And, you know, you take uh, Suites Avenue or you take uh, some houses on Martin Luther King Boulevard or someplace in the West Ward, you know, five or six houses, right? And yeah. uh, you guys redevelop those those houses, and maybe and maybe and maybe we get someone from you know College of New Jersey, maybe we get someone from Princeton, maybe we get someone from Trenton High, that can shadow you guys and make this like a, a informal internship, right? What would that look like? Yeah, that's definitely possible. And there's so many neighborhoods in Trenton where yes. that is you know, that are ripe for something like that. Yes. And what really worked for us was that it really was like, a, like, you know, we were a, a for-profit company, yes. but it was really community driven. And we really, neighbors came and helped us, you yes. know, they, they brought us like, like bagels <laughs> Saturday mornings when they saw us working our butts off. Yes. So what really works is to have um, people in the neighborhood who care about it, mm-hmm. doing the work and helping to promote it and inviting mm-hmm. people to look at the houses so it's, I think it's a great model and I, you know, we've kind of, I, you know, idly I'll say, so not super seriously, but there've been a few people that we've talked about, like a good friend on, um, on Pearl street yes. is, is buying his grandmother's house. She, okay. you know, she passed away, but he's going to buy it. He's going to stay there and fix it up. Yes. And he's talked about doing that exact same thing on his block. Awesome. And, um, and so you know, your comment is really a good uh, nudge to like to really work on stuff like that because I think it really would work. Well, John, it could be confirmation, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and I'm thinking, you know, you get the city involved, not, not to a high degree, but you can do a public-private venture, and now there could be some additional outside funding coming, just, just minimum because, you know, with the current state of our uh, city right now, we don't want too much of their participation. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're, they're going to mess things up. So let's so let's 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 go fast forward. Okay. When, right. when did you decide that you wanted to purchase the Roebling property and begin development of that property as well as doing the loft? When did that happen? Yeah. When, yes. So we had done a bunch of um, houses and properties in our neighborhood in Mill Hill. So. Uh, you know, like 20 houses and a, and a, um, and a building that we ended up putting in how many six condos into it. Yes. And so that was over a long, you know, a, a period of time. Yes. And then we, we partnered with Roland Pot and we did the trend mix project, which was the conduit and was the urban word where trend social. Yes. And then we did a project on center street. No, can I, can I stop that, you? Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. When you mentioned Roland Potts again, it just it just dawned on me the conversation we had when we were at dinner. Your yeah. your partner was talking about how he was the not the DJ, but he was like the general manager for a conduit. And he, and, <laughs> yeah, there was. And a... David said he he would often have to make these bank runs to deposit the money from the evening's activity. Wow, I didn't, yeah, so... I didn't know you guys got down with Roland uh, to the, the, the conduit like that. I I, just, I thought Roland did that on his own. I didn't know that. Yeah, so we were partners with Roland. Roland was really the manager, but there were times when, you know, David was very involved, not me so much. Yes. But um but but David would also do a bunch of work there and so yeah, so it was a very interesting experience. Wow. Yeah, um <laughs> it was really great. But it really is doing stuff like that, you end up doing everything that's anything that's needed really yes. to just to make it work. Yes. So um but yeah, so then we did and then we did um projects you know, a bunch of buildings on Center Street. Yes. And then we were looking for, when we were done with that, we were looking for a um, sort of the next thing in Trenton. And we yes. made proposals kind of for a, a number of different sites. And the one that we ultimately latched onto as the one that we thought would make the, have the biggest impact in Trenton, yes. um, partly because of its location and partly its size, and it was a really good fit for us because it was also historic buildings was, um, was in the rolling wire works complex block yes. three. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was, um, owned by the Mercer County improvement authority. That site had gone through, it was kind of a mess development mess. And finally the County got it back and they put out an RFP and we submitted an RFP at that point. Uh, we were HHG development. So yes. David Henderson, Michael Goldstein and I, and we put together a, um, 
a major mixed use redevelopment proposal and our, our proposal was selected and that's what we've been working on since wow. then. And it's, we've gone through a lot. So the first phase was rolling lofts yes. and that has been really successful. That's 138 loft apartments and that's been up and running for a few years. And we're just uh, the next building, building 110, yes. which was the um, Roebling company's carpentry shop. This, oh, it, it's just a beautiful heavy timber building. Yes. That is um, Princeton Hydro, which is a company out in Hunterdon County is now moving into Trenton. They're awesome. bringing their 50 plus employees are going to be hiring people in Trenton and they're, they're moving in right as we're speaking. So they're going to have their ribbon cutting, you know, in a few weeks, they're going to have their, you know, grand opening in about a month. So it's really, really, really exciting. Awesome. Awesome. Matt. So first of all, congratulations. Now on that, Thanks. on that pad, on that site, what else do you have that you're thinking about developing? So there are two, two major parts, I would say. One is um, kind of a group of buildings yes. um, that uh, that you've seen. So a couple yes. of them are historic, the old um, boiler house yes. and the engine room next to it, plus two new buildings next to it um, okay. that we're going to build. And so those are a combination of more loft apartments. So it's probably another oh, 90 or 100 loft apartments. Okay. Plus you know, some, some retail amenity okay. group hub distillery space, depending on what we can get. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's the next phase, that yeah. piece. And we're about to meet with the city about that. Now, are the and lofts, then we're, are the lofts going to be a uh, market rate? Or, or, or they are generally going to be, um, you know, mainly market rate. They're yes. going to be, you know, at least 20% are going to be, you know, what's called income restricted. So, um, yes. um, but in general, they're market rate. Okay, cool. cool. Um, but it's, you know, but they're, they're, they're I don't, you've seen the rolling lots, right? They're beautiful. Oh, ab- they're yes, a great, they and they're a great deal. So anyway. Yes, absolutely. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And, and then the other piece is building 114, which is right on Hamilton Avenue, which is kind of a big, yeah really large building. So we're looking for a big tenant there. We'd love to have like, uh, you know, a company with, that brings a lot of jobs into Trenton and makes yes. a big splash. So that's what we're looking for. And, um, and we're thinking of a variety of uses. It could be, uh, you know, any kind of, you know, office space, but we're also thinking like research, pharma research, or, um, or even like engineering research, stuff like that. Yes. Um, and we have a, a couple of leads, so we'll okay. see how that goes. Okay. Cause I, I know at one point, uh, the YMCA, is it the YMCA or the YWCA? Well, the YMCA. It was YMCA. Yes. They, they were, they, they were, were into, looking, yes. In fact, we did uh, some layouts for them. Um, okay. You know, they're thinking, I'm not sure where they're at right now, but um, but we haven't really talked with them in a while. But but uh, it would be great if YMCA expanded in Trenton yeah. some more. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think they like where they are now on Pennington Avenue, so they may they may just expand. They may, as yeah. of now, they may just expand from there. Now, what, yeah, and they've been doing a great job up there, I have to say. So, absolutely. anyway. Now, what does Trenton need to do to reclaim its status as the the uh, capital of New Jersey. What do we need to do in terms of real estate development? All right, I'm going <laughs> to, so Trenton has a ton going for it, you yes. know, and, and we all know this. So it's a great location, train, um, highway, like it's a great location We're on the Delaware River. Beautiful location, amazing history, beautiful buildings. The whole, it has the whole package. Yes. One, the big thing that is, I think that is holding its, its back in terms of development yes. is related to the fact that it's um, the capital city. So the cap being the capital is an honor and it like brings some, no, you know, notoriety. Yes. But it also is, especially in New Jersey, it is a huge problem because Trenton is a small city. Yes. And the largest landowner in the city of Trenton is the state of New Jersey. Got you. Okay. And the second largest is Mercer County. And then, and then, you know, a majority of the land, over 50% of the land is either owned by a government entity, the state, the county, the city owns obviously some land or not for profits. And so that means this small city has a greatly reduced property tax base yes. because none of them 
pay property taxes. And so, in, in effect, the residents, the taxpayers of Trenton for the last 75 years have been subsidizing the state and the county. So Trenton right now has the highest property tax rate in the state and maybe in not this highest, but very close to the highest. Wow. And one of the highest in the country. And it's because we, as the people who live here and work here, yes. we subsidize the state. And so the state pays no taxes. It pays, it does give money to the, to the city of Trenton. Yes. In the form of, you know, uh, aid to distressed cities, like it does to a bunch of other cities. Yes. But it doesn't, it doesn't pay what it owes to the city in terms of property taxes, and neither does the county. And so what it means is that we have a super high uh, property tax rate. And so when we are redeveloping single family houses, yes. there's a cap on what you can, you can sell it for because the property taxes end up being so out of whack to the house that it like doesn't make sense for people to buy it once once it gets over a super a certain price. So there's this artificial cap on property values in Trenton because the property taxes are so high and because we're all subsidizing the, these governments. Wow. And and the the state and um, you know the state has been doing this for whatever seventy five years. The worst culprit was governor um, was uh, Governor Christie, Christie, yes. yeah, yep. Chris Christie, who used, you know, used, you know, a, a corrupt mayor at the time as an excuse to yes. like practically eliminate state aid, and it was like, and it was like saying, um, I'm going to take away all your money, money that we really do owe you, but I'm going to take it away from you, and you're not going to get it back until you get your fiscal house in order. Yes. How do you get your fiscal house in order when all this money that is really yours is taken from you? Yes. It is, it is an impossible situation, and it is completely anti-urban, mm -hmm. racist, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so, that's, so that is really the state must pay its fair share and not make the city beg for it. The county should pay its fair share and not make the city beg, beg for it. Yes. And just do it. We're the capital city. You owe it. So, and you know what, what's so what, what's so interesting, John, is everybody thinks, and because everybody can see the properties, the buildings that the state has, but I've never heard anyone talk about the buildings that the county has. And now that you mention it, I'm like, that's that's a lot of properties too that the county has it in is. the city of Trenton. Yeah. Like right not as much as the county. I mean, not as much as the, the state. No, but but, but yeah. it's still a lot of land. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, if you look off, you look at a lot of the old warehouses off of Cass Street that the yeah. county maintains. Right. Wow. Thank you. I, I didn't know that. So, so that it's, it's not, it's a daunting task, but not impossible. Now let me ask this question. Have you and your, and your partners ever thought about developing stuff along the, the riverfront as a way of developing uh, those properties and encouraging more people to participate and to be a part of uh, Trenton? Oh, absolutely. Now the problem is that that land, the, the <laughs> best land along the, along the waterfront, is owned by the state. Oh, come on, man! Seriously, all of you know it, all those parking lots, all that, all that—that's all state land. Behind behind the um, the, the the court building, yes. that's all state land. All of it is state land. So it's a huge amount of property that is, you know, it's the best. It's the best land in Trenton. Yes. It's all the waterfront. And there used to be, you know, I've, you know, looking at aerials from the 1930s, yeah, yeah. there used to be these amazing, wonderful, historic neighborhoods that were all demolished for urban renewal. And then they put these big office buildings in, in an ocean of parking, Yes, you know, and it's none of it pays taxes. And so, you know, there, there are plans, mass, you know, the, the city has done a number of plans showing how that area should be reconfigured and developed. So yes. Route 29 should be turned into a boulevard. Mm -hmm. It should open up all of that land along the waterfront for development, for yeah. private development, be a huge amount of property taxes to the city. It would be beautiful. It would be, yes. so we would love to do that, but the state has got to get out of the way. Wow. 
Now, now, so, but there are ongoing conversations for such thought or such vision to be brought to fruition, right? Yeah, I mean, and they've come, come and gone. So, yeah. you know, under Mayor Palmer, you know, it was getting pretty serious, yes. but then it kind of went away. And, you know, so I don't know how serious it is now, but okay. yeah, that should definitely happen. And it's it's just, um, you know, another one of those things that the, that the state has all the best land and then blames Trenton for its, you know, its now, uh, financial issues. Now, so. now, John, dream with me, if you will. You and your partner, you have a billion dollars disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> I fantasize about this, I have to say. I really have. Okay. What's the first project that you're going to work on? Money's no oh issue God. now because it, it's your it's your own money. Disposable, a billion dollars disposable income. Well, all right. So I don't know if there's a first, but there's if it's that much money, really, there are like a bunch of things I would do at the same time. Yes. One is that there's is, you know, the city has a lot of um properties that either have been abandoned or they've taken back because of taxes yes. and the city tends to demolish them. What I would try to do is like, I would really, what I would do is, is try to buy as many as that, uh, that I can. And now I, I love your model that you were talking about before because yes. really do it as community based, mm -hmm. but fix them up and, and sell them. And if I really had that much money, then I would subsidize a bunch of them and make sure that that's, you know, that it's both new people coming to the city, yes. but also that the folks that are living here, you know, can buy, could buy their own homes. So that's, that's one fantasy. Okay. The other is, you know, there are another, a second one is that, um, you know, that land along the river, if that were developed, not just, you know, with private money, but really if I had a billion dollars and I could spend on what I, what I wanted. Yes. I would make sure that that it was done really beautifully, so that it had a really beautiful um, river walk, gotcha. and um, and really, really, you know, so it it felt world kind of like world class. Yes, yeah, gotcha. and and there are a couple of other things like that. And trying like, I'd love to see more sculpture around the city. Yes, um, you know, the South Broad Street bridge should get fixed up by the by DOT <laughs> and but you could have a beautiful like arch that you know that commemorates the second battle of Trenton so yes. there are a bunch of things around I just love to have monuments around Trenton to mm -hmm. important things that have happened in the city Absolutely. and then I also have a, a fantasy about you know Trenton is pretty well known f for the Roeblings yes. and you know we have a lot of those buildings left which is great mm -hmm. But Trenton was the top producer of um, pottery and ceramics in the country. It was, yes. And yeah, and Lennox, most of those, yep. yeah, Lennox, mm -hmm. um, American Standard, yes. the you know that company started here, and there were 120, 130 pottery and ceramic companies in Trenton, wow. and most of the evidence of that is gone. Wow. But I think it would be great as a to have a center of American pottery here in Trenton that's both like a museum to all that stuff. Yes. But it's also a place where artists could have galleries and that you could train new and upcoming artists in pottery and ceramics, but yes. also in uh, industrial production so that, that we would have, that we would produce pottery and ceramics here in Trenton again. You know so where, that's another fantasy. You know where that building is? It's where, I, where it should go? Yeah, um, it, it, the, the incubator, the old, the old incubator parking lot overlooking Mill Hill Park, based on what you just said, it would be fantastic oh, right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, it would be great. Okay, were you thinking of another location? No, that's the exact location I was thinking Wait, of. Hold on, hold on. So that <laughs> you're means... talking about you're talking about the building with the with the empty parking garage, yes, yeah? Yes. At Broadway, right across from um Turning Point. Yep, Turning Point, Mill Hill, but but also That is the building where I think that's the location where I think it should go. Okay, so you didn't know that I was thinking that, but you were thinking no. that You've got a billion dollars. So somewhere in between <laughs> this conversation, we're going to have some money to get you that parking lot, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and interestingly, that that building belongs to Trenton Parking Authority. And I've been meaning to send the parking authority because I've written up. <laughs> I've written up this idea. I was going to send them this idea. And yes. so after this conversation, I'm going to send it to them. Okay. <laughs> who's the, Why but, not? Who knows? Who, but, you know, but I th who's the chairperson? Is that Ann Labatt? That's now Ann Labatt, yeah. Oh, come on. It's a shoe and it's done now, John. Call it done, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
if she likes the idea, she has a ton of energy and she would, she would get on it. I don't know if she'd like the idea, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Now, now, so would you encourage uh, more folks to get into uh, architectural design or architectural architecture? Uh, Yeah, sure. I think it's, I've had a great, um, it has been perfect for me. Like it's been being here in Trenton and being an architect and then also like having the opportunity to do the development. It has been, it's, it's like my perfect life. I feel, (laughs) I feel so blessed. No. Um, now, do, so, yeah. now, when they have, and it's been because of COVID, but when we have, like, um, take your son or daughter to school and they bring in guest speakers, do you ever go to Trenton High to speak about what you do? Are you ever invited to go to Trenton High to speak about what you, you do? You know what? We've had folks from the office go to Trenton High and, yes. and speak there. I don't know if you know Stephen Doyle, but he's done that a few times. Okay. Um, but I personally have not. But I, oh, have I? Wait a second. I have spoken with. Actually, during COVID, so I've I have participated in something called Arc Prep, which okay. is a Princeton University program okay. with Trenton High School students. Yes. So I've participated some with that. Okay. Um, and it, which is a great program. Um, but I have not gone like sort of to do an official, you know, talk about architecture. Gotcha. We do have we do have an intern right now here, who is a. Um, a trend high senior who, awesome. uh, yeah. So he's, so he's, he has uh, been working here this entire semester, which is great. No, no, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but just bear with me. Now, where did you go to grad school for architectural design? I went to grad school to university of Virginia. Okay. Were there any, were there a lot of minorities in your, in your class at that time? Uh, there were not, wow. there were not. Wow. Okay. Okay. And you know what? This is a, I mean, uh, I, there were not. And, um, and I'm also thinking, I also got a, a degree in historic preservation from university of Pennsylvania. Wow, that, okay. I, that was a few, that was a few years later yes. and that was more diverse. Yes. So, um, uh, which was good, but you know, architecture school, it has been Low, and that's something that the American Institute of Architects is really focusing on. Yes, it is. It is. It has taken a long time to get a uh, to be more diverse. Okay, so. and why do you, why do you think that that would be, John? Um, you know, it's it's <laughs> it's probably the same as for all all professions. Is that there is, um, there is, un, what, what's the term? There's unexamined bias. Okay. Yes. So you've got, you've got white folk who have been there for a long time Yes. and they're just like more used to you like, um, you know, they, I don't, you know, I think there, there's certainly probably some latent prejudice, but I think it's more just ass, like assuming that, that, uh, you know, or I don't even know really how to how to say it, but just that we assuming that the that the white students are better than than the people of color, than black black yeah. students, and not and not being open to um, you know to reality, let's say. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I actually, in retrospect, I I saw some of that, and I I didn't really understand it at the time, and it's only in retrospect yes. that I was like, oh my god, that was so blatant. There yes. was a student. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, there was a student in my when I started at UVA, mm-hmm. a uh, you know an African American student, yes, nice guy, and the there was a summer program sort of to, pre- to prepare for um, for the um, you know, the full program that started in the fall. Yes. And the the professor just had it in for him and made sure that he didn't make it through. Wow. It it was really it was really shitty. Wow. So which sorry. No, no, no so, you know, cause And I didn't even get it at the time. I was mm-hmm. only thinking about it uh, much later that I was like, Oh my God, that really was yeah. unbelievable. But so. I but I, I thank you for being at the forefront now. Uh, now I'm gonna really put you on the spot, John. You ready? All right. All right. Yep. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about it, but then you've got, you can do a, a 30 second pitch as to why any developer uh, would want to build in historical Trenton. Why would he or she want to come? 
the historical Trenton, perhaps partner with you and redevelop parts of uh, Trenton? Take 10 seconds to think about it, then you got a 30 second pitch. <laughs> Um, well, I'll do, I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, the reason we're in Trenton, that yes. I'm in Trenton, or, or is the reason why I think other people should be here. It's, uh, you know, it's why you're in Trenton. Yes. It is, it is a dense, vibrant, diverse city filled with people who have either stuck it out because they love Trenton yes. or have moved into Trenton because they see what, what's possible that they want to be in this kind of environment. Yes. And, you know, on top of that, for a developer and somebody who loves historic buildings, there are wonderful historic buildings and amazing history. Yes. So it, it's not the easiest place to develop. And, you know, you touched on it before, like right now, city government is it's really, you know, problematic. And, and, and people, I know that there are people afraid of, of dealing with Trenton because of city council. Oh my God! But <laughs> just a bit of fun, like, yeah. but um, but it is it, like I said before. It has been a great experience for for me and for David and me for other folks here. So I really feel very very lucky to to have found this place and to you know I've been here now. Oh my gosh! So what year is this? this is, uh, you know, it's I've been here thirty four years. So okay. just about. Now, do you think had you stayed in Brooklyn, would you have had this level of success? Um, oh, you know, that's hard to say. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I was a kid. And then so, you know, partly what's, what I also has sort of um, become apparent in my life, it's just how my life has paralleled yes. all of these bigger movements. So I, I was born in Brooklyn. We lived there until I was 10 or 11. Then we moved out to the suburbs. And, um, and it was really just afterwards and thinking about my experience in Brooklyn and then in the suburbs, yes. um, really understanding how much I appreciated cities. Gotcha. So if I'd gone back to, you know, we thought about doing work in New York. Um, and, um, but it was, you know, we found Trenton mm -hmm. and it was, it was a great place to just get involved yes. and it was easy to get involved. Yes. And I, we just felt like we could make a difference, a bigger difference more quickly and more easily. And I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, if we'd gone into New York, if, because certainly, oh my God, Brooklyn had so much development and oh, not all of it yeah. that I like. So gotcha. anyway. But I know Brooklyn has done a lot in the past five to 10 years towards their own waterfront too. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, we're yeah. the, um, the Brooklyn uh, basketball stadium. That area used to be like like run down Central City, yeah. And now it's like world class now. So can you imagine, man? If you guys were there, and I knew you, boy, I'd be hanging out with you guys over in Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 no, but but John, I I thank you for all the development that you continue to do in the city of Trenton. Uh, I thank you Thanks. for being accessible. And I know one of the things that we want to do with this conversation. Anyone who's going to be listening to this podcast, I want to, to them to uh, be encouraged to either give me a call to give you a call because sure. we want to continue this dialogue that you're open to do some, some, some ventures with some other minorities so that we can think about building, buying, and growing the block, right? Exactly. And, uh, and I, think, I think that Yeah, we it's all about the future. Like, Absolutely. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really building – in and investing in the future, but, you know, yes. physically, but also, you know, people, yeah. you know, now I, we want. Now I, I've got an idea for you and I apologize for jumping. If, if you had a billion, see, I'm, I'm, I'm using your money. If you had a yeah. billion dollars, what I would love to see is small kiosks and paddle boating all the way down the canal, starting at Calwalda Park. Oh, that would be cool. Right, like that would be like, awesome. Like small shacks along the waterfront, yeah, yeah. you know, just selling different odds and ends, but you have a little paddle boat, right? And you can yep. go all the way up to, you know, Lambertville and all the way down or even further past Lambertville, but just paddle boat like on a Saturday or Sunday or Friday or whenever. And you have small kiosk people selling things. That that would be so cool or to or to really light up. You know what um what's the what's the um the high line? Thank you. The, oh, high, yeah. the high line in New York, can you imagine the canal from 
Cal Waldo Park going all the way up to Lambertville, almost like the highlight where you've got all these lights and small businesses along the way, and you're just yep. walking that on, in the evening on the, on the, on the towpath. I, you could start doing that before that. Start at, at the Battle Monument. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. you know, it's it, that the canal runs right through the city. It's really great. So, well, John, it's your money. So let's start using some of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to get that billion first. Yeah, so, but, anyway. But, but that's a good idea. The Battle Monument, mm-hmm. right? And then you did the uh, the towpath, right, with the highlight kind of concept. And the power yep. boats, oh, that would be fantastic. Oh, my God. Let's talk to the mayor. We, yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of creativity that, that needs to be done. So let's let's do this. With the time that we have hey, left. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually was just going to do a plug. So I think that yep. that's a great idea. One one thing that, that Dave and I have done in Trenton is that we've started something called the Trend Arts Fund. Yes. Which is through Princeton Area Community Foundation, which, and its purpose is to have long-term regular funding for arts organ, arts history, culture organizations in Trenton. So I'll just put a, another, I'll put a little plug out that Absolutely. out there for a, a project that we have. So awesome. So, but with the time that we have left, uh, give us a plug for your company, and uh, and uh, give us some information as to how people can be in contact with you. Sure. So I my uh, architecture firm is called Clark Caton Hints, and we're right in downtown Trenton. Uh, 100 Barrack Street, right across from the old barracks. And uh, I'm happy to get emails, jhatch at cchnj.com. Yes. And then we also have the development company is called HX, HX2 Development, HX2 Dev. And probably the best, you know, if you email me, the uh, uh, jhatch, I can also give information about that, or you can yes. check out Roebling Loft. Um or the Wireworks development, you know, there, there's stuff like uh, all about that online. Yes. So, um, yes. okay. John, listen, buddy, you have been fantastic. You shared <laughs> some information with me I didn't know. We had a chance to dream together, and we also know yeah. what kind of vision we would see and like to see for the city of Trenton. So, my friend, yeah. as always, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Let's talk, right. in, let's talk right. in text later on, buddy. Thank you so much. Okay, great. All yep. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. Hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9311 or email kevin at minding-our-business.com. We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.